Hi, my name's Tech Dave, and today we're looking at this slightly battle scarred beast mode, but it's still a very usable, delightful system called the Lenovo ThinkPad X230 tablet. And today I'm going to turn it into my ultimate music making machine. So, for the ThinkPad X230, tablet um, it has some faults which we'll look at in a minute but um, the basic specs are the i5 3320m at 2.6 gigahertz 4 gigs of DDR3 we'll yet to find out whether that's 2 2 or 1 4 gigs thick and a 320 gig hard drive it's got a BIOS password which I know how to bypass so I'm going to do that um, then I'm going to probably put Ivy Rain on it uh, to unlock 2133 megahertz RAM, which I will be installing in here, 16 gigs of 2133 megahertz. We're going to test the battery and possibly replace it. If not, uh, there's a bunch of damage, which we'll go over from another angle in a minute. And the basic gist is, I used to own the i7 version, and I loved it, but I gifted it to my partner because he's a digital artist, so the touchscreen and pen and stylus, which this does still include, um, was so invaluable to her as an artist that I thought I couldn't keep it all to myself. So I go and gave her that. But then I've still got an X230, which I will show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. I've got an X230 set up for basically live looping and music performance and like with a bunch of software and cool stuff for music. And I've also got over here my X201. Now I got this for £50. And it's absolutely lovely for reading music and general usage with the touchscreen, but it's a first gen i7. And whilst the keyboard is absolutely delightful on this, the trackpad sucks. There's like quite a few faults with it. And the first gen i7 just, it's not great for Windows. Um, and uh, it, not even Linux, even modern versions of Linux, it, GNU slash Linux, it, it has trouble with. But I really wanted something for reading music as well. And I'll show you more features of that. I've got a little Bluetooth pedal that you can change pages for reading music. I'm going to install uh, Ableton and a bunch of software for music production as well. So basically, that's the rough gist of the video. We're going to get, we're going to look now at uh, faults and issues that I can address and sort out to get this thing in better condition. But that's the gist of the video. So uh, I will see you in the rest of the video. So for now, let us start by looking at the basic specs and condition of the device. So the top screen, top display housing, uh, is actually not bad. That could be buffed out. It's got a couple of stickers saying, so for example here, I don't know if you can see that, damage to the display port so i knew that when i bought it the display port out is damaged but i'm going to use it with the docking station for external displays plus we've still got vga we've got two usb3 we've got express card we've got wireless kill switch uh cpu vent and then here you can see the first bit of damage which was in the ebay listing it's just i'll show you that it just slightly lifts up so i'm going to just gaffer tape that back in place at some point because my father made for me a custom tech dave sticker decal so i'm probably gonna put that on this and then just put a layer of gaff you can't see what i'm doing layer of tape just along this strip to hold it in place eventually i can replace the whole top display housing but for now we're going to do that second port of call is the screen is actually in perfect condition. I don't know how good this screen is. I remember that I, my partner had the i5 before she had the i7 that we then sold on. So I don't know what level of quality we're going to have in terms of fidelity of the actual screen, but I'm still very pleased by it. Let's power her up, see what happens, see if she's got any battery. I think the battery's dead. The keyboard's slightly dislodged. You can see here they've obviously opened it up because they haven't put the keyboard back in place. It's relatively clean. It doesn't. So my i7 had like a textured case, whereas this has got a nice smooth, smooth case. Sorry about the creaking of the camera. You see, it's the i. You see, it's the i5. Um, no fingerprint reader, but we do have we do have a visible webcam. So it's got a webcam. 
and the microphones and everything. Um, other faults, can't really see any other than these missing pieces. So obviously the display has been replaced at some point or they've just been damaged off. But we're missing the covers on the screws there and the screw there. So I'm guessing it was probably a donor machine that sort of was taken apart. I didn't see uh, any product key under the battery. So I'll have to get a copy of Windows 10 for this bad boy, which I can probably take off another machine. All screws present except for this middle one, which is particularly difficult to get back in anyway. So a lot of my X230 and well, all my X230 machines are usually missing this screw anyway. It's got a little happy sticker there. Um, rubber feet missing there. A few scratches, bits which scrapes rubber feet missing just here, just off camera. There's a rubber, another rubber feet missing. But yeah, the stylus is included. I assume that works, so we'll find out if it's broken or not. But other than that, it seems to be in decent condition. So I'm going to go on to start by setting it up, refurbishing it, putting all my hardware upgrades into it. Then I'm probably going to mod the BIOS. I'm going to do the BIOS password bypass. Then I'm going to put Ivy Rain on it. And then we're going to dive into how the system performs. Like As you might be able to see in the background here, we've got a bunch of ideas because what I want to set this up for is basically... Um, well, I can list up what I've got. The Ultimate Music Making Device. Uh, we've got P PDF Reader for reading charts, so you can swipe using your finger. To And then I've got a pedal and stuff. I've got Ableton. I've got Muse Score for writing and music charts and blah, blah, blah. Ableton 9 Music Performance and Production, including touch control of Ableton, which should be quite cool. I've got my drum kit over here. That, that mixer there connects via express card to Firewire to the whole drum kit, so we'll record some drums as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if I need to give any more information about that, really. Uh, iReal Pro, if I can get... If the BIOS mod bypass works, I can put Hyper-V slash virtualization on and then install Android subsystem for Linux. Uh, obviously, you're going to do some spec upgrades. I've got a wireless WAN card, 16 gigs DDR3, 2133 megahertz. Um, wireless one module for on the go just for the music or whatever so I can play backing tracks and then some maybe some extra stuff like reading ebooks because I found a way to install Kindle and also it's got Calibre library that I'm going to use as well so you can re put the put it in like put the laptop in portrait mode and use it as an e-reader and just swipe to change the pages that could be quite cool I thought about some GeForce Now and the eGPU, so we'll see how much time we have. And then I'm going to use Krita as well for drawing. So that's that's the rough map of what we're going to do in the video. Thank you for sticking around this far. This. Thank you for sticking around so far. And if you like the idea of what I've described, what we're going to be doing, stick around to see the hardware upgrades, maintenance fixes, and um, oh, like and subscribe if you like what you see. Like and subscribe. Always a useful thing to remind people to do. So yeah, let's dive into the main body of the video. Cheers. Hi. First port of call. We're gonna um, flip this bad boy over. So I've got some donated, I say donated, they come from other machines. I've got 2133 megahertz, 16 gigs, HyperX RAM. I've got a 480 gig SSD which has already had pre-installed. Oh, it looks like the battery might be bad because we've got that flashing LED there. So it looks like the battery is completely kaput. We shall see. Uh, could be all right. I think it's probably either really flat, obviously it didn't power on, or the battery itself. It's, it's an, I looked already, it's an original, probably came with the machine. But yeah, 480 gig SSD with all my software already installed. And I've got a wireless WAN module, which I'm probably going to put in either later on or now. We'll see how we get on. But yeah, so the first thing to do, unplug the machine, remove the battery, fit this new hardware. So let's crack on with that. I'll either speed it up or waffle away while I'm doing it. Hopefully the viewing angle is absolutely fine. You can see in the background there my T480. By the way, again, 16,000 views now, nearly 400 likes. That video did really bloody well, I'm really chuffed about it. 
So first thing to do, we're probably going to whip out the hard drive. And it claimed there was a 320 gig hard drive. There is no hard drive, so they lied. Future Tech Dave here. So despite my um, initial salt about the lack of hard drive, I contacted the seller, really courteous, responded within minutes, uh, were really helpful. Um, they're sending me out a caddy and a hard drive, which was awesome. They also offered a refund, but I chose the hard drive because I want to use an MSATA with this. So that was brilliant. And uh, I said I would give them a shout out. So here they are. High level 04. They've got a ton of ThinkPad stuff. Um, and it's all really good prices. So I may be making more purchases myself. Um, and I thought, I thought I'd just point that out. They were really courteous. They solved the problem. It'll be on the way to me in the post soon. And um, furthermore... They have, he said, I believe he said he had like another 10 of the X230 tablets, something like that. So if you want in them, there'll be a link in the description. So you can sort of copy along at home my little setup if you wanted to. But yeah, shout out to Higher Level 04 on the UK eBay. Link in description and uh, back on with the video. So that's always nice to see. Unless it's uh, MSAT or SSD, but I very much doubt that. Uh, we've got the rubber feet inside, so that's good. So we don't have the hard drive caddy, but we do have the rubber runners, so that's something. No hard drive, even though they claim there was a 320 gig hard drive. But these rubber runners will be sufficient to get us going. Um, let's have a look which way does that go. That goes in there. There we go. And we can just pop that back on. And then... Uh, swap the RAM out, guaranteed the, well, not guaranteed, but it's quite possible there's no RAM in here as well. So, probably, I mean, they'll know they didn't put a hard drive in it, so I can probably get a discount or a refund. And then we've got one 4 gig stick, yes, if it's actually 4 gig. So we've got one four gig stick of a data that's actually really handy and then we've got our two sticks of 16 uh six totaling 16 gig two eight gig sticks totaling 16 of the hyperx fury hopefully we don't need the bios mod for this to work we'll see if it boots should do it works in all of our x230s i've used including the x230 tablet and then for now i'm going to leave the wireless wan module uh, out because sometimes they don't boot with it especially because it might have a supervised password on it meaning that uh, any additional hardware might be rejected so we're just going to start with this and then try and boot her up see what happens as you saw under the battery no product key so we'll see how we get on with that but there that's the basic things done claims 320 gig hard drive so I'm a bit pissed that that's not present so I should be getting on to eBay about where's my 320 gig hard drive um, the power so this is first boot since I got the machine I haven't booted it at all so we'll just see whether it actually does anything or whether it's completely dead and I've been ripped off so let's move that up a little bit and see what happens Drum roll, please. There we go. Right, this will take a minute. It'll probably be really boring. So I'll readjust the camera and then see if uh, it's picking everything up correctly. So we are into desktop. The laptop seems to turn on. Uh, obviously, let me just get some Wi Fi connected so we can do. Um, sorry, just doing my Wi-Fi password. Um, get some updates for the system. And then I'm going to run Lenovo Vantage, which I've got down here. Uh, that's for my software. We'll show you that in a bit. Let's just test Task Manager first. 
Oh, this is loading. Little slow, little slow. It's the first boot, so it's probably doing Windows Update in the background. That's stuff from Minerva. Yeah, these are them. I'm going to System Update. Device Details. So we can see 16 gigs of RAM. Core i7 30... Ooh, don't do that. Zoom out. And move the camera forward. Right, so it's seeing the SSD. 300 gig use, uh, 3.1 gigahertz turboing. So uh, I can't zoom in because the screen will flicker. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM is detected. Everything seems to be working nice and nice. I'm going to run system update. Alternate drive, we've got all that. No internet connection. So it's having trouble with the. Right, let me pause and do that. Right, sorry, I just clicked fast there. So we're seeing the full 16 gigs of RAM at 2133 MHz, so we don't need the advanced BIOS for that. We're seeing both disks and partitions. G partition, don't remember that. Uh, Wi-Fi, Hyper-V, versus Ooh, that's interesting. So it is virtualization is disabled, as you can see just here. So I do need to... It does have Hyper-V support, but it's disabled. So oh, the touchscreen's picked up straight away as well. So I need to, I do need to do the BIOS bypass to get all the functionality I want. I'm going to do a system update. And while that's going on, we're getting some, yeah, I'll just quickly do this. Fix account. Account fixed. And we can see, if we look at the display, I already labelled it correctly as my X230 Music because I knew this drive was going to be going in here. It seems we've got it activated, and then if we go to display, it'll tell us what kind of display we've got. So we've got wide, wide angle and high density flex view display, so it's correctly picked up the display as well. Uh, no activation on Windows, but we can deal with that in a bit. So it seems seems to function perfectly. Battery is charging. It was on zero percent when I plugged it in. Now it's on one percent, so it looks like it'll be. Vaguely useful. We can look at battery details in the Nova Vantage as well. Sorry about the refocusing. It says battery is in good condition. It came with a 90 watt charger. I'm using a different one, but I've got it got a 90 watt charger with it, so a decent high powered charger as well. Um, it's saying the battery is in good condition, so it might hold a decent charge. So that's really pleasing to know. It's gone up to two percent now, so it probably just went dry. during the process of transport. Yeah, we do want that. We want the Wacom driver. So it's doing that. Other than that, if we go to Task Manager, not Task Manager, Device Manager. See if we can turn up the brightness as well. Yeah, that's max brightness. That'll be something or other. So it's got graphics correct. It's got Touchscreen, network adapters. We're not seeing any wi -Wi wireless WAN, so I can add that. That's, I don't know what that is. Okay, that's probably the hardware radio. I'll recognize the ID for it. Let's have a look, hardware ID. That is, yep, yep, that's the... Wi-Fi kill switch sort of driver. So yeah, all in all, it seems to work. It looks nice. Let's test, test the stylus. It might not work till that Wacom drive is sorted. Oh no, we've got stylus picked up straight away as well. That's Dolby Digital Plus. So, what about our oh, face buttons? It's not picked up the face button, so we're going to have to manually install them. But all in all, it seems to work, which is the important factor, and I'm blithering on quite a lot. So the next port of call, probably fit, re, reseat this keyboard so it sits properly. Install this wireless WAN adapter, see if it picks it up, and if it doesn't, we'll move on. And then, um, IV Rain, BIOS password, bypass. If it's even got that issue, which it might not, who knows. But it said it did. And then what I'll probably do is 
go through this vast selection of software that I've got on here. So this is all pre-installed, so I've got my two sound cards plus my Mbox sound card recycle bin. I've got a couple of games. Game Glass is legendary, it's like a touchscreen control for games. We've got ebook reader, emails, we've got calendar, notion, Facebook, all my social medias for music. Adobe Reader. Oh, I shall be right back. Hi. So, after a brief excursion to some drumming, we're back with the X230. That was my friend come over to film some drums using my T430 and the aforementioned drum kit and Firewire mixer. T430 is just behind that lamp. And we're going to do some more of that probably in here. We'll see how we get on. But, what have I done? So, a few little anomalies have appeared, which I've resolved. So, for one, for example, the laptop, when it was in... Let me fire up. In this... Hold on, don't break my computer. In this orientation, uh, the... The touchscreen was reacting as though something was going on. It turns out, thankfully, the track point, it wasn't the track point, but it was the track pad where it was touching on the back here and being weird. So now, thankfully, um, I only had to disable the track pad and not the track point when I'm in tablet mode like this. So that was a really useful thing if you come across that issue. And generally, yeah, like who cares? It's like the track points on this aren't exactly magnificent. I'm just putting my, pass my pin in or whatever. Um, and I am a track point for lifer, so now it runs absolutely stably in tablet mode without any of the glitching or jittering. So, I'm just going to pause and get a stand for the laptop. There we go, I hope that wasn't too jarring. So, yeah, now we've got tablet mode active in Windows 10 without it being weird and reactive, because before it was sort of the cursor was glitching all over the place. Uh huh. We've got touch controls. We've also, so I get about two hours. It, actually, the battery's in decent condition. I was really pleased by that. So I'm getting like two hours on full charge. Or what I've done is my usual trick of uh, creating a custom power. Power. I did this in advance because I knew I'd want to. Forty percent CPU limited battery saver, and then when that updates, then pop it on battery. Um, and in a bit I will show you uh, how much battery life you get from that but in general uh, that's just when it's on battery and then when you plug it in it defaults back to um, just it's normal performance and stuff so you can have it always on 40% sorry always on 40% CPU limiter and then when you change settings when you unplug the laptop it automatically goes to battery saver and 40% CPU limited which I'll show you if anyone wants to know just hit me in the comments because I can show you how to do that you can see the frame rates changed as well where it's like limited the there we go so what else did I do? I installed the face button drivers so you can change the orientation on the fly and press, it just presses control or delete but I think you can customise what it does. That one's not working. There we go. Um, so I showed you the battery, tablet buttons. Um, I had to get the driver for the Wi-Fi kill switch on the side because it doesn't natively include that. Uh, with Windows, I've got like an absolute ton of software that I installed, pre-installed before on this SSD for music and music production. So, um, oh, I managed to activate Windows 10 with an old license using the troubleshooter. Um, and yeah, I was just going to show the comparison because this is the i5, but it's a slightly more high-end i5. So, for example, it's going to be really hard to show in this light, but the actual texture of the case on the i7 is rough. I don't know if it's a refurbished case or what, but the, there's a smooth one on this and a rough one on this. But I think they both got 
the same panel somehow, which I don't really, I almost can't believe my luck because this is, this is the flex, this one's got the flex view and so has my partner's, which is the i7. So, I think you'll probably recognise, if I just turn off tablet mode and go just to desktop, you'll probably be able to see, no, don't turn off, um, there's like, I know this is all on battery saving and everything, but there's, oh, it's really hard to show, right, calm down, so there's actually quite a significant increase in quality of the screen on the i7, although it's not as much as you would think, I think they are identical panels, so that's quite fascinating. But yeah, it's got a smooth case instead of a rough one and stuff. Uh, I've got my partner's i7 because I'm installing a ton of the features that are on this one, which I will show you now. I'm there for her in a bit. So, the best way to do this is to go through. Um, before I move on, I'm going to say the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wireless WAN module so I can use WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook messengers and stuff on the go and that'd be really handy so i don't have to have my phone out um and then whether that works or not i'm still gonna do, i'm gonna do the bios bypass later on i'm gonna ivy rain it uh but for now i was planning to just show you show you through all my software really um so starting at the top let's get a little bit of a better view we've got Spotify, which obviously works over data, you can put a data saver on and use a metered connection and all this sort of stuff using the wireless WAN. I've got an O2 SIM card with 10 gigs of data a month, which is like £13 part of O2. I've got Winamp with all my backing tracks and stuff for the reading stuff, which you'll see later. I've got Ableton, I've got Krita for drawing, I've got Microsoft Whiteboard, I've got OneNote for Windows with all my notebooks opened for all my music stuff there so i've got like all my music notebooks of which there are many blah 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 swipe down to close swipe down and then stupid fat fingers um then i've got all my cloud services which i swear by so i've got google drive onedrive dropbox that's whatever uh, muse score which i highly recommend if you're into your open source software or you write notation and you want something free it's basically free ableton not ableton free sibelius and it works magnificently i've also got this is it's absolutely amazing for me as a because i'm learning i play uh, quite a bit of jazz and i read charts and i've got a digital real book which when it loads why is that taking so long to load? It's still on the battery thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just turn it off, battery saver, quick. I'll pause and do that. So, yeah. Uh, I also realised my lens was a bit smudgy, so the camera quality should improve now. We've got 40% battery saver that you can switch by right-clicking or pressing and holding on there, clicking power options. But, yeah, that's peripheral to what we were doing. And then you can set on battery maximum processor state 40%. But this is cool. You can download it for free, I think. Um, and it's an app, fully indexed and bookmarked real book for touchscreen devices that works with Adobe Reader perfectly. Adobe Reader is deprecated, but you can actually find it and just download it manually and install it. Um, but yeah, you've got like the entire real book there, which is pretty badass. I think I got this. I might have bought it. I can't remember. But yeah, and then you swipe down for the adjustments so you can annotate, you can print, you can make notes or whatever, and then you double tap to close. Um, so that's brilliant. News score is more built for a keyboard because you need to change it, but let's just try opening it briefly. See what it looks like in portrait mode, just for my curiosity. I'm just loading my plugins. I'll remind later. Oh, it does work quite nicely, full screen. Um, yeah, I mean, it's quite large, so you could probably feasibly, let's see, clarinet, add, done, and see what that looks like on the screen. 
So, yeah, if you could resize this, maybe, or drag it off to the bottom. No, that made it worse. I'll put it... Whatever, oh, that didn't work. But basically, yeah, um, if I hadn't just completely messed it up, this might be usable via touch. It's not too bad. Um, I'd have to f probably adjust that, which you can't do touch. But I could do it later and then get like a slightly more screen space and then you can read and write notation in MuseScore probably. They've got an app called StaffPad, but it's like 75 quid, which would work perfectly with this, where you literally just draw with the stylus and it turns it into notation. So I might look into that if it becomes relevant to me. Then I've got Notion, Microsoft Word. Everyone knows what they do. I just plan all my stuff along with OneNote. I've got Facebook signed into my music thing, which is forward slash drbradley46 if you want to, for some reason, see me as a musician. Instagram, Dr. Underscore B underscore Bass. I've got my WhatsApp, which I won't show you, but that's going to be for business WhatsApp eventually, but it's my personal one. My email apps, I've got Calendar, which I made larger so it looked nice and on this aspect ratio. Notion Calendar. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, there we go. This isn't going to experiment anything. So <coughs> I've got like 30 gigs collected over the year of all ebooks and stuff. Over the years of ebooks. So I've got 48 laws of power, just as an example. And then you've basically got, when it loads in, give it a sec. Don't know why it's taking so long. There we go. So the cool thing is, you can tap to go back on the left side, tap to go right on the right side. You can also swipe, which is quite responsive, which is good. Test the responsiveness of the, uh, what are they called? The touch screen. So you can read, and you can customize the crap out of the library library. It's absolutely amazing. And um, so yeah, ebook viewer, I've got tap pinned on start and then the actual management. Um, but yeah, that's not relevant at the moment. I've got a lot of books basically. Um, and then under there, what have we got? We've got Artemis, which is a sick game. It's uh, Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator. And I've got that touch screen. I've got the missus touch screen. I've got my other one touch screen. My P51 is touch screen. And it's basically a multi-seat, multi-system spaceship emulator. This won't, I won't show you Game Glass because you need the server running on your main PC, but it gives you touch control over games like Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, Euro Truck Simulator, stuff like that. And then there's just my sound card stuff and a recycle bin. So in general, I've got pretty much everything I need. I've got a ton, absolute ton of um, PDF format uh, charts and stuff to read um, so I just thought I'd show you that later on in the video if it's of all its interest stick around because I'm going to show you some looping probably maybe even a little video from a gig I'm going to do with it in my garden who knows but the idea is all of that is my looping setup the x230 goes there in portrait mode or possibly with the display folded out so I can still access the keyboard and then I don't need that keyboard there but I'm, I've got a portrait monitor so they're both portrait ton of MIDI inputs, I've got touchpad, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to move over to that to demonstrate Ableton performance, which should be pretty solid because I've used the X230 before, same CPU, or identical CPU, identical RAM, uh, identical specs, and I know it works pretty damn well. So, and then I'm going to do Velcro and that, blah, but we'll come to that. Um, but for now, sorry about my horrible shaky camera work. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get the wireless WAN module to work. And then IV Rain, then BIOS Password Bypass. So I'm going to do all of that. Um, I probably have to do the BIOS Password Bypass first so that I can access the BIOS to enable flashing of the BIOS. So that's probably what you're going to see. I'll install the wireless WAN card first because I want to make sure that isn't rejected. And then and even, even if it is, it doesn't matter because I can then... Um, bypass that and change the BIOS settings with the BIOS password. So 
I'm not sure what you'll see next, but I'm not going to bother filming putting that in because it's quite straightforward. Just Google. I've done it in other videos, and also you can just you take off. You undo all the screws for the keyboard. You undo all the screws for the track, the palm rest, and then you plug it in. So it's relatively straightforward. But I will probably show you the Ivy Rain and the Bias Bypass. So I'll be back with some of that delicious stuff.